in this lecture we shall now consider integral solutions to the temperature boundary layer equation the equation you will recall is written here d delta 2 by d x where delta 2 is the enthalpy thickness plus delta 2 times the wall temperature variation term the pressure gradient term that is the variation of u infinity equals the Stanton x which is a dimensionless heat transfer coefficient at the surface the wall velocity term and the viscous dissipation term. A purpose here is to understand how the solution procedure is conducted. Then we will look at solutions with effects of pressure gradient and suction and blowing with an application to flow over a cylinder. Presently, the effect of wall temperature variation will not be taken, nor will the effect of uh, dissipation be considered. So, like in velocity boundary layer solution, we first begin by saying let the temperature be a function of distance from the wall y divided now by the thermal boundary layer thickness delta. I called eta t equal to y divided by delta and the assumed expression is as follows. It is the fourth order polynomial with five coefficients. These five coefficients are to be determined as we did in, in the case of velocity boundary layer equation uh, with five boundary conditions. <coughs> The first of these is at y equal to 0 of course, t is equal to t w and all eta t's will be 0 and therefore, a will be equal to t w. The second condition at the wall derives from the differential equation of the boundary layer and it would be alpha times d 2 t by d y square which is the diffusion term equal to uh, the viscous dissipation term. and the wall velocity term v w d t by d y. At the edge of the boundary layer, thermal boundary layer, t will equal t infinity of course, the temperature derivative will be 0 and the fact that temperature approaches t infinity asymptotically uh, would entail that d 2 t d y square should also be 0. So, we have 5 boundary conditions and five constants a, b, c, d and e to determine. Here is the temperature profile as it looks. In dimensionless form, the temperature profile looks reads as t minus t infinity divided by t w minus t infinity equals 1 minus 2 eta delta t uh, eta t 2 times eta cube t minus eta 4 t plus a times again a function of eta t, where a captures the effects of wall velocity, viscous dissipation through the Eckert number and the pressure gradient effect through lambda. Lambda as you will recall is nothing but uh, delta square by nu d u infinity by d x v w star is simply v w delta by nu and the corresponding velocity profile is again reproduced to refresh your memory f 1 is equal to that function f 2 multiplied by v w star is that function and f 3 multiplied by lambda is that function f 3 function is that. So, we now have a temperature profile and a velocity profile as you can see uh, the expressions are quite complex, but nonetheless can be worked uh, on a piece of paper. Now, to make further progress in our equation here, we need to evaluate delta 2, the enthalpy thickness and the definition of enthalpy thickness is 0 to L u over u infinity into t minus t infinity uh, divided by t w minus t infinity d y 
Essentially, therefore, it is an integration of the two profiles, the velocity profile and the temperature profile to 0 to L. So, remember we recall that if this was the boundary layer uh, development delta, then if Prandtl was greater than 1, then thermal boundary layer thickness would be smaller than delta, but if Prandtl number was less than 1, then thermal boundary layer thickness would be greater than delta. And we now choose L to be bigger than any of them. This is L. L therefore is equal to delta or delta. You can see that L will be equal to capital delta for Prandtl less than 1 and it will be uh, Prandtl greater than 1. I mean greater than or equal to would be a appropriate way of writing it. This is delta. Now, you can imagine because the two profiles are highly complex, the evaluation becomes extremely laborious of this quantity delta 2 and hence usually simplifications are made. For example, for liquid metals where Prandtl number is much, much less than 1, for all practical purposes u over u infinity is 1 that simplifies u over u infinity equal to 1 that simplifies the integration to only the temperature profile and also delta is very much greater than delta and then you will see therefore that since delta is very much greater than delta and it appears in the numerator as well as denominator 3 divided by Prandtl number. Prandtl number is of the order of 0 0.001 and therefore, this number is also very large. In other words, the both the numerator and the denominator assume very high values and therefore, A would tend to 2. For liquids, V w star equal to 0 is not of interest and in which case, A if I drop V w star terms here would simply be that term divided by this term it would read as Prandtl E c by 3 lambda plus 12 by 6 in square into delta by delta whole square. And if I were to consider oils in particular for which Prandtl number is very, very much greater than 1, then delta by delta would be much, much smaller than 1 and therefore, A would practically trend to 0. So, one can make such assumptions to simplify uh, this evaluation of the integral. So, in order to explain how the procedure works, I am going to consider a very simple case of a flat plate boundary layer. I will ignore wall velocity V w equal to 0, because it is a flat plate boundary layer u infinity will be a constant and E c would be equal to 0. In other words, if you see this equation, there is no actual variation of temperature, there is no actual variation of velocity. So, that term goes to 0. There is no viscous dissipation considered nor is this considered. So, therefore, d delta 2 by del d x would equal Stanton x is the most simple form of the energy equation and the corresponding velocity boundary layer equation will be d delta 2 by d x c f x by 2 equal to tau infinite tau wall over rho infinity square. I am also going to consider the case of Prandtl greater than 1. So, delta will be bigger than the thermal boundary layer thickness delta and I am going to postulate that the constant wall temperature boundary condition T equal to T w starts at x greater than x naught and T w is greater than T infinity let us say. So, the temperature between 0 and x naught of the wall will be simply T infinity, but is suddenly raised to T w uh, from x equal to x naught. x naught is called the unheated starting length. There is a purpose for doing this. Uh, this analysis would lead us to considering the effects of wall temperature variation, which I shall consider in the next lecture, but here simply 
appreciate the procedure of how these two equations are solved simultaneously. Again to simplify matters instead of taking the, the longish fifth order profile, I am going to take very simple profiles u over u infinity equal 3 by 2 eta minus 1 by 2 eta q. You will see that this profile satisfies the boundary condition u equal to 0 at eta equal 0 which is at the wall. It also satisfies the condition that u equals u infinity equal to 1 at uh, eta equal to 1 which is correct. It also will satisfy d u by d y equal to 0 at uh, y equal to delta. So, you can you can see that that condition is also satisfied and uh, <coughs> and therefore, the equation is quite ok. Likewise, the temperature profile is T minus T w over T infinity minus T w would be 3 by 2 eta T minus 1 over 2 eta T cubed. So, with these two simple very simple temperature profile and velocity profile the delta 2 would now read as 0 to delta 3 by 2 eta minus 1 by 2 uh, eta cube into as you can see here we want t minus t infinity over t w minus t infinity uh, and therefore, this will be a t minus t infinity over t w minus t infinity would be equal to uh, 1 minus t w minus t over t w minus t infinity and therefore, this will be 1 minus 3 by 2 eta t plus 1 by 2 eta t cube into d 1. This is how delta 2 will be evaluated and the evaluation leads to first of all the momentum thickness delta 2 as you recall is 0 to delta. Uh, will be u over u infinity into 1 minus u over u infinity whole uh, dy and therefore, that will be equal to 0 to delta 3 by 2 eta minus uh, 1 by 2 eta cube into 1 minus 3 by 2 eta plus 1 by 2 eta cube dy. That evaluation gives you that delta 2 by delta will be 39 by 280, delta 2 by delta is equal to 39 by 280. So, this is one result. From the velocity profile tau wall which is equal to mu times du by dy at 0, you will see this will become mu into u infinity into 3 by 2 1 over delta tau wall over rho u infinity square would be equal to 3 by 2 uh, into nu divided by u infinity delta. That is what C f x would be and that is what I have shown here. Now, if I substitute this solution delta by 2 equal to delta 39 by 280 uh, into the momentum equation which is d delta 2 by d x equal to tau all over rho u infinity square which we showed just now is equal to 3 by 2 nu times u infinity delta and delta 2 we said is 39 by 280 into d delta by d x. Then you will see that I get essentially delta into d delta by d x equal to 140 by 13 nu over u infinity, nu over u infinity which is nothing but d delta 2 squared uh, I mean sorry d delta squared by d x equal to 280 by 13 nu by u infinity and if I integrate that 
then I get delta square uh, minus 0 equal to 280 by 13 nu x by u infinity. And that is what I have shown here as the solution. Delta is 0 at x equal to 0, which is the start of the boundary layer. Uh, so, you get delta equal to under root 280 by 13 nu x by u infinity or which is nothing but 4.64 under root nu x by u infinity. If I now substitute this delta in the definition of C f x 3 by 2 nu over u infinity, then it can be shown that C f x is 0.646 Reynolds x to the minus half. Now, you will recall from our exact similarity solution, we had obtained C f x equal to 0.664 Reynolds x to the minus half. So, even though we have chosen a very simple velocity profile here 3 by 2 eta minus 1 over 2 eta cube, we have obtained a result which is very, very close to the exact solution. It is for this reason that the integral method is called the approximate method because it depends on the approximation to the velocity profile that we have used. It is not that the equations are, are inexact, it is the method of solution that is approximate. So, this is how one solves the momentum equation. We now turn to the energy equation. Then as I said, this is the definition of delta 2 and if I substitute, uh, if I integrate that equation, uh, if I integrate this equation, I would get delta 2 by delta equal to 3 by 20 r minus 3 by 280 r cube. Stanton x like we evaluated this Stanton x is nothing but uh, you will recall h x by rho C p u infinity and that is equal to q wall over rho C p u infinity into T w minus T infinity and that is equal to minus k d T dy at y equal to 0 divided by rho C p u infinity T w minus T infinity which will give me minus alpha times d T by d y equal to 0 over u infinity t w minus t infinity and therefore, you will see that this will reduce to very simply 3 by 2 because we have the temperature profile uh, and therefore, we can evaluate that as 3 by 2 alpha times u infinity into delta. This is the evaluation of Stanton x the right hand side of the energy equation and r here is delta by delta. And since we are considering the case of Prandtl greater than 1, uh, delta by delta will always be less than 1. If I substitute these results essentially d delta 2 by d x, what is the energy equation equal to Stanton x. So, if I substitute this results, I will get d delta 2 by d x equal to 3 delta by 10 r minus r cube by 7 d r by d x plus 3 by 20 r square minus r raised to 4 by 14 d delta by d x. It is a fairly straightforward algebra, but notice each of these brackets because r is less than 1 r cube by 7 will be much much smaller than r. So, this can be ignored likewise r 4 by 14 will be much much smaller than r square. So, even that term can be ignored and then I will get d delta 2 by d x is very nearly equal to 3 delta r by 10 into d r by d x plus 3 r square by 20 d delta by d x 3 by 2 u infinity. So, I get essentially d delta 2 by d x is equal to 3 by 10 delta r d r by d x plus 3 by 20 r square d delta by d x equal to 3 by 2 alpha times delta over u infinity. All right, where do we get delta from? I need to get delta and d delta by d x and that is what we evaluated on the previous slide. You will see that delta is just 3 by 10 into under root 280 by 13 
uh, into nu x by u infinity r d r by d x plus 3 by 20 r square d delta by d x will be simply 140 by 13 nu by u infinity divided by. Uh, so, in other words this will be multiplied by 13 by 280 into u infinity by nu x equal to 3 by 2 alpha times delta u infinity. This part of the equation simplifies to r cubed plus 4 r squared x d r by d x equal to 13 by 14 1 over Prandtl number. Now, this left hand side can be manipulated to read like that. This is nothing but uh, 4 by 3 x raised to 0.25 d by d x of x raised to 0.75 r cubed equal to 13 by 14 Prandtl number. So, I can now integrate this equation integrating and noting that r, r is remember our we are starting to heat from x equal to x naught and r is delta by delta. So, this is delta whereas, this is delta. So, r is equal to 0 at x equal to x naught. So, if I make use of that, then I get the solution that r cubed will equal the solution to that equation is r cubed equal to delta by delta whole cube equal to 13 by 14 Prandtl number 1 minus x naught by x raised to 0.75. And therefore, now if I substitute this uh, value then you will see that Stanton x which was already shown to be equal to Stanton x which was shown to be equal to 3 by 2 alpha uh, u infinity delta. This definition delta would be r times small delta and r is given by that expression and delta already is known as uh, uh, under root 280 by 13 as you will see here delta is under root 280 by 13 nu x by u infinity will give you this relationship. If you want to see how I have done this you will see that Stanton x therefore will be 3 by 2 uh, into alpha divided by r which is um, 13 by 14 Prandtl number into 1 minus x naught by x raised to 75 uh, raised to 1 by 3 into delta which is 4.67 under root nu x by u infinity into u infinity which is a constant. This is what Stanton x would read as and all this put together it will result into uh, Prandtl raised to minus 0 0.66 and 0.331 re x to the minus half Prandtl to the power minus 0 0.66 1 minus x naught by x 0 0.75 minus 0 0.33. So, this then is the solution to the case of unheated starting length x naught. When obtaining similarity solutions, we had set we had boundary thermal boundary layers and velocity boundary layers growing at the same point x equal to 0. And therefore, in effect this was x naught equal to 0 and the similarity solution was 0 0.33 Reynolds x to the minus 0 0.5 Prandtl to the power minus 0 0.6 and you can see that in spite of a very simple temperature profile and velocity profile we have obtained an extremely accurate solution uh, using integral method. But you can see that 
whereas similarity solution required solution of three uh, ODEs. Uh, the integral solution is simply pencil and paper method and produces many a times extremely accurate results. Now, of course, this special relationship x not uh, for uh, the special solution for heating started from x equal to x naught will be used later on to generate solutions when the wall temperature varies arbitrarily with x. Uh, and I will be using what is called the superposition theory and which is something I will discuss in the next lecture. But at the moment, let us turn our attention to uh, the case of pressure gradient. Presently, in the flat plate case, the pressure gradient was 0 and therefore, the momentum equation was very, very simple and so was the energy equation. But now, you will see our momentum and energy equations would be more complex. So, if I turn to uh, the first slide, you will see I am not considering wall temperature variation, I am not considering V w, I am not considering, but I am going to include this particular term which contains the pressure gradient term. So, then you will see that the uh, equation governing this situation is simply this V w E c all are 0. T w is constant uh, and therefore, the equation would read as d delta 2 by d x delta 2 by u infinity d u infinity by d equal to Stanton x. So, the equation is d delta 2 by d x plus delta 2 by u infinity d u infinity by d x uh, equal to Stanton x. The corresponding momentum equation was d delta 2 by d x plus delta 2 u uh, by u infinity d u infinity by d x into 2 plus h equal to C f x, where h was equal to delta 1 by delta 2. You can see the two equations are very, very similar, very, very similar. Now, here to make further progress, I am going to define what is called as conduction thickness delta 4 equal to k by h x. Delta 4 will be defined as k by h x. You, you recall that the units of uh, k are watts per meter Kelvin, whereas units of h x will be watts per meter square Kelvin and this has the units of meters therefore, and therefore it is called the conduction thickness. Uh, and it will be proportional to all other thermal uh, boundary layer thicknesses such as delta, delta 2 and so on and so forth. Incidentally, Stanton x would readily follow. It will be simply alpha divided by rho u infinity because you know that Stanton x is h x over rho c p u infinity, but h x is nothing but k by delta 4 u infinity and therefore, this is equal to thermal diffusivity delta for u infinity. So, now because of the similarity of the momentum and thermal boundary layer thickness uh, thermal energy equations, we shall postulate as done by Eckert and the reference is given here, the reference is given here. It is a German paper of very old paper of 1942 and he said we will postulate that uh, the rate of growth of conduction thickness d delta 4 by d x will be first of all governed by the rate of growth of momentum thickness delta 2, which in turn was governed by u infinity d u infinity by d x and nu. So, there will be the first three parameters here, first three parameters here and then of course, it will also be governed by delta 4 and it would be governed by Prandtl number. So, the rate of growth of a conduction thickness uh, would be there. 
we are following a, a strategy very analogous to the results we had derived for integral momentum equation. And then now we shall say we will carry out dimensional analysis. So, let us say if this was the boundary layer growing on a flat plate or, or any other plate the, uh, any with a pressure gradient, then in the streamwise direction let the this is x, this is the transverse direction y and this is the lateral direction z. Then uh, if I say the characteristic dimension in direction x is capital X, the characteristic dimension in direction y is capital Y and characteristic dimension z in direction z is z. So, in other words this is z, this is x and here y. Then you will see delta 4 being a transverse thickness will have dimension y, u infinity being a stream wise velocity would be would have dimension x by t, du infinity by dx of course, would be 1 over t simply divide this by x. Nu uh, would be y squared by t because uh, this is kinematic viscosity mu by rho and the shear stress. Uh, uh, this is nothing but tau all by rho equal to uh, nu times du by dy uh, at y equal to 0. And therefore, you can see that the shear stress uh, which acts all along the surface uh, on an area y z uh, would have units uh, and therefore, the nu will have units of uh, y squared by t. And then finally, d delta 4 by d x would be simply y divided by x. So, if I essentially then if I were to carry out a dimensional analysis, you will see I will get y by x which is d delta 4 by d x equal to first of all delta 4 which is y raised to a. Then uh, u infinity x by t raised to b. Okay, this is delta 4, this is u infinity, then uh, into y squared by t raised to c, which is nothing but nu and 1 over t raised to d, which is uh, uh, du infinity by dx. So, I have captured all for a fixed Prandtl number. So, if I equate the like powers, so power of y on the left hand side is 1. So, that will equal a plus 2 c, power of x is minus 1 will be equal to b and the power of time is 0 equal to minus b minus c minus t. So, with this I can determine a, b, c and d everything in terms of d let us say and you will get u infinity by nu d delta 4 by dx as a function of d delta 4 by du, du infinity by dx. Remember this quantity delta 4 square by nu du infinity by dx is very similar to delta 2 square by nu du infinity by dx which we had called kappa and also delta square by nu du infinity by dx which was called lambda. So, it is very analogous and therefore, I call it kappa t to indicate that this is thermal parameter associated with conduction thickness delta 4. So, we have a relationship very similar to what we had in integral momentum equation and therefore, I can evaluate both these quantities from similarity solution u infinity equal to c x m, which is nothing but a special case of arbitrary variation of u infinity and the and the functional 
must admit similarity wedge flow solutions for a fixed Brendel number conduction thickness square divided by nu into d u infinity by d x is a function of u infinity divided by nu d delta 4 square by d x for fixed rental number. Now, of course, this functional must hold for uh, wedge flows as well for which uh, u infinity is equal to c x raised to m and n u x r e x to the power of minus 0 0.5 is equal to minus uh, is equal to minus c 1 m Prandtl sorry plus c 1 n Prandtl uh, or equal to minus theta 0 m Prandtl. These are the similarity solutions. These are known to us. So, let us see what n u x r e x uh, raised to minus half represents. It is nothing but uh, h x multiplied by x divided by k into u infinity into x divided by nu raised to minus 0 0.5, which I can also write as remember k by h x is delta 4. So, this can be written as x divided by delta 4 into c x raised to m into x divided by nu raised to minus 0 0.5, which I can also write as x by delta 4 c by nu raised to minus 0 0.5 into x raised to minus m plus 1 by 2, which will equal 1 over delta 4 c by nu raised to minus 0 0.5 into uh, x raised to 1 minus m by 2. And all this is is equal to C 1. And therefore, delta 4, therefore, delta 4 will be uh, C by nu raised to minus 0 0.5 x raised to 1 minus m by 2 divided by C 1 and uh, delta 4 square therefore, will be nu by C into x raised to 1 minus m divided by C 1 square. And therefore, the left hand side which was delta 4 square divided by nu d u infinity by d x will be simply uh, nu by c uh, x raised to 1 minus m by c 1 squared into 1 over uh, 1 over nu into uh, d u infinity by d x will be c m x raised to m minus 1. So, that is what I write here c m x raised to m minus 1. So, you can see c and c will get cancelled, nu and nu will get cancelled and uh, x into x raised to m minus 1 and x raised to 1 minus 1. So, both these get cancelled and I will have essentially m by c 1 squared. So, you can see the left hand side delta 4 square by nu d u infinity by d x would be m by c 1 square. 
If I follow the same logic, then the right hand side that is kappa t, which is function of kappa t, then kappa t equal to uh, u infinity by nu d delta 4 square by d x can be shown to be equal to 1 minus m divided by c 1 square. So, our relationship, uh, our relationship delta 4 square divided by nu d u infinity by d x is a function of u infinity nu d delta 4 square by d x for fixed parental number will simply be equal to m by c 1 square equal to f of 1 minus m by c 1 square, where c 1 is a function of m and Prandtl number. So, you can see that by knowing the values of m and the corresponding values of c 1 for the value of Prandtl number, I can always construct this functional relationship and that is what I have shown on the slide. Basically, that is equal to kappa t and likewise we can show that u infinity over d delta 4 square by d x nu is 1 minus m c 1 square. So, basically the, the relationship that we had here is simply equal to 1 minus m c 1 square f m c 1 square f kappa t where C 1 is that belonging to the m chosen. and Therefore, by selecting different values of m and C correspondingly C 1, I can calc plot this variation and this is what I have done on this slide here. You can see this is kappa t, this is function of kappa t the right hand side and this is the kappa t equal to 0 line and this is f kappa equal to 0 line. So, this is where the uh, this is where the axis uh, 0 is at this point. What I have plotted here are the similarity solutions, but you can see that for considerable variation of kappa t, the variations are actually very close to a linear uh, variation. So, and the and the graph has been plotted by looking at results for Prandtl equal to 0.7. You can create similar graphs for other values of Prandtl number for which we have, uh, we have the uh, similarity solutions. So, from known similarity solutions for Prandtl equal to 0.7, the relationship is linear and you can see therefore, the x intercept here will give you the stagnation point solution. Uh, uh, the y intercept will give you the uh, d u infinity by d x or equal to f kappa t equal to 0 solution and that would be flat plate. I am sorry here there is a there is a little error x intercept would read stagnation y intercept should read flat plate. Then using the value of for Prandtl equal to 7 c 1 m equal to 0 is 0 0.9293 and c 1 m equal to 1. Uh, 0.493 basically what I have done as we did in the wedge flow solutions of weights f uh, um, kappa t is related to a minus b kappa t or essentially this is uh, a minus b delta 4 square by nu d u infinity by d x and this is uh, u infinity by nu d delta 4 square by d x. So, I have to determine a and b. So, the first thing I do is to look at the flat plate solution for which d u infinity by d x and therefore, a will be simply equal to uh, as you can see uh, 1 minus m which is equal to 0 divided by c 1 square. So, that is equal to 1 over 0 0.293 whole squared which is 
Now, B would be determined where this is 0 and you will recall for stagnation point solution all thicknesses are constant and therefore, this is equal to 0 then B will be simply A times this quantity which is m by c 1 square and m is equal to 1 m by uh, m which is 1 over c 1 square uh, that will be equal to 11.67 into 0.493 whole squared which gives you 2.87. So, that is how I generate the linear curve fit to the integral energy equation and this can be manipulated to give delta 4 square equal to 11.67 nu u infinity raised to 2.87, 0 to x u infinity raised to 1.87 d x exactly as we did in case of momentum. So, then the closed form solution having obtained delta 4 in this manner. So, delta 4 square will be square root of this. I get the solution for Stanton x alpha u infinity by delta 4 equal to all this for Prandtl-Lucan. All these constants, this one, this one and this one result from the curve fit which we obtained for Prandtl equal to 0 0.7. If I had chosen any other Prandtl number, I would get both these constants to be somewhat different and therefore, I can generalize and say that Stanton x is kappa uh, k 1 nu 0.5 u infinity k 2 0 to x u infinity k 3, where all these are functions of Prandtl number. This is something you can do with your by yourself, because you already have the similarity solutions available to you for different Prandtl numbers for m equal to 0 and m equal to 1 and you can generate the solution. I will now consider the flow over a cylinder that we had considered earlier uh, for which u infinity by V a is 2 sin 2 x star where x star is x by d and I had called this at f x. Then for Prandtl number 0 0.7 and T w equals 0, uh, it is possible to integrate substituting for u infinity our function. It is possible to show that delta 4 by d r e d raised to 0 0.5 would read like that and Stanton x would read in this fashion. If I were to integrate this function from 0 to separation 1 over x 0 to x separation, I get the result 2.686. To see exactly the values of local values of Stanton x well, and how delta 4 varies, here are the angle along the uh, along the cylinder starting with the stagnation point at 0. So, you have delta 4 by d conduction thickness is 2.42, it reduces to 1.7, 1.05 and then again starts rising to and this is as you will recall is the point of separation. Stanton x is very high, the Nusselt number is very high at the stand or, or the heat transfer coefficient is high at the, st at the stagnation point but then gradually reduces uh, as you move uh, towards the vertical axis of the cylinder and uh, becomes 0.388. C f x on the other hand starts with a very low value and rises and again when the flow begins to decelerate the C f x begins to uh, fall again here. Whereas, during the acceleration part the C f x goes on increasing with the angle. With this I conclude the effects of uh, pressure gradient uh, on uh, uh, on heat transfer in integral solutions.